Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to Agincourt episode four, the final episode in our battle from the Men of Iron tri pack from GMT Games. The French cavalry are poised for one last charge. The English longbows are notched and ready. The only questions that remain, are can the cavalry punch through the English lines, the weakened English lines from the incessant first and second waves? Or will the longbows once again save the day? and take England to victory. We're going to jump right in and fight this one to the end. Let's get started. Let's do a quick recap before we jump into this final episode. Here on the right hand side we can see the casualties and that's probably a good place to start because the French have lost five of their six archer units. The only one that's left is this lone crossbow on the western edge of the map. They've also lost three of their men-at-arms units from Charles's battle over here, who has since repositioned himself on the east edge of the map. In the face of these casualties, the French pulled back and reorganized in the last episode, which was largely one of maneuvering and not so much fighting. Charles's battle came to the east, Jean's battle came to the west, and Valeron's strong battle came to the middle here. They're all poised to launch forward in an attack. Now, during the first two assaults, the French were able to knock out two longbow units and one men-at-arms unit. Not a ton of casualties, but the English don't have many to lose, and that's forced them in addressing this flank maneuver, it's forced them to leave some gaps in their lines. So the big question is, can the French punch through and do enough damage right away to win the day, or will the longbows be able to sustain those charges and carry the English to victory? Now, a critical note here is that the French have lost 19 of their 30 flight point penalty, uh, damage uh, casualties. So, if they get to 22, we have to roll a die at the end of each initial activation per side. And if they go over 30, the English win. So the French can't take too many more casualties before they'd have be forced to give up the day. Likewise, the English have had six casualty points already. Theirs is 14. Now, they don't have to roll a die to add that to that total. So the French are going to have to use, lose some damage, but right here, this is worth four, and if by chance they were able to get Henry, that would finish the battle as well. So this could go either way. Let's jump in and get started with the French activation. After thinking about where to start with this activation for the French, I've decided to start with Valoran's battle right in the middle, because I think they have the best, best chance to do some damage on this thinned English line. So we're going to move Valoran's forces straight forward here and prepare to charge. Two, four, and the goal behind this unit is going to charge right on these longbow uh, men of Edward of York. This is with their mounted men of arms. These mounted men of arms, however, are going to go two, four right here and prepare to charge at Henry's men. Likewise, we're going to move these, dismount these men of arms here, one, two, three, four, and they're going to engage the longbows. We're going to pull these forward right down the road. One, two, three, four. At that accelerated movement rate. Likewise, they're going to be shocking right against these longbows. Mounted men of arms over here. One, two. They're going to be charging at these longbows. The dismounted men of arm men at arms are going to move forward two, four. Be ready for the next wave that happens. So the French have moved forward. Now we do have, actually I should have done a couple of things here. One, as soon as these units move next to the longbows, they have to face defensive fire. So let's resolve those. We should have done them when they move, but we'll do them now, it doesn't really matter. All right, we'll fire first this longbow fire. It doesn't really matter which one is it, but this longbow firing at this men of arms, firing at a plus two. Chances are they're gonna be disordered. The French will need some luck to get them through. An eight plus two, this unit is disordered. Likewise, we'll have Henry's longbows fire at the unit that's right beside them there. Rolling again at a plus two. Two plus two is four. That is no effect. So this men-at-arms will have a clean attack at the longbows, depending on which way they go. They could go this way or actually kind of join the attack on Henry here too. So here's how the French are going to attack. The three mounted units are going to charge straight forward at the units opposite them. them. These two men-at-arms that got through, one of them is going to go after the longbows. The other one is actually going to be designated to join in on the attack on the men-at-arms. So the next thing we need to do is to resolve the movement element of the charge attacks. That means that this unit is going to come forward. As of right now, it still has a charge attack on it. However, it gets to face the reaction fire from the longbows. 
The longbow's firing at plus two. There's a good or odds here it could be either unhorsed or disordered. The French hoping for a lucky roll. Eight. Oh, that's not a lucky roll. Uh, eight plus two is ten. And uh, that's got a bunch of bad things are happening. First of all, the unit is disordered. So we're going to move these mounted men. Of, uh, the unit is unhorsed, actually. That's one. So the horses are shot out from under. They are disordered and unhorsed. And because the result was a 10 or greater, we're going to roll on the French track to see if Valoran has died because the result was greater than a 9. On a die roll of an 8 or a 9, the longbows have killed Valoran. A 9! Oh, a brilliant stroke for the English. Valoran is pierced by a longbow, topples off his horse, and goes crashing to his death. The consequences, let's figure out what happened because of this. All right, to clean this up, Valeron is killed, so he will be removed from the battle. However, a replacement leader will take his place, and we can designate any one of the units where that replacement leader appears. However, of equal importance here, the shock, uh, the charge attack is transferred into a shock attack because uh, the horses were all shot out from underneath them. So two de devastating short shots here by the longbows, and of equal importance, Two flight points are added to the French track because of the loss of their named leader. So that gives them 21. A die roll of nine is 30. They are right at the edge now of potentially losing. And there's still quite a bit left to do here. Let's continue on. Next up, these mounted men-at-arms are going to charge forward to go after Henry's men. Now, although there is no crossbow fire, because these uh, Henry's men are men at arms, they have to, the, the horses have to go through a charge reluctance roll, which means that a four or less, they successfully charge, a five or greater, and it's, uh, the charge is blunted by the reluctance of the horses to close. The unit must shock attack the, char the target instead of charging it. We get an eight, so yes, they hesitate and are blunted. They, the horses are not happy at all about charging forward here. So this attack will then be transferred into a shock attack. So we'll mark this with the shock attack. And we'll put it there for now, I guess. And that takes care of that. Next up is to resolve the last charge attack here, which is by these uh, mounted men, men of arms. They are moving forward on the longbows. The longbows will once again roll plus two against the mounted units here. Very close range. I get a two plus two is a four. Unlike their partners on the other flank, this time no effect on the, uh, the mounted men of arm mount, mounted men of arms here. So they will continue their charge attack in the next round. Let's start by resolving the the most promising attack for the French here, which is these uh, mounted men at arms uh, charging against the longbows. Now they've got some pretty significant advantages here. The unit is plus one, and mounted men of arm men at arms against longbows are plus three. That gives them a plus four. There's only one negative modifier, which is a minus one because the unit moved in the preceding phase. So it's a plus three on this attack, which is pretty significant. Three plus three is a six. Gives defender disordered retreat one hex. So the longbows will be pushed back. The mounted men at, ar men at arms will advance and must advance into that space. They don't get what would have been nice would be get a continued attack here, but that doesn't work. Now the longbows too are disordered here, so we'll flip them over. So successful charge by the French here. Let's go to the far side here and resolve this attack here. Un the uh, unhorsed men at arms are going to be charging, uh, shock attacking against the longbows. The modifiers work out to be a plus zero. Two, two plus zero is not very good here. Attacker disordered, retreat one hex. Oh, attacker, attacker disordered on a two. So basically that's not no result. They're gonna kind of stay there. They already were disordered and disordered is disordered. So that one fails for the French. Let's move next to this one in here. Next, let's move to these men at arms attacking on the longbows. The dice roll modifier is a minus two. They get uh, plus three because of their matchup, but they're going across the stakes and then they're disordered, which brings it all the way back down to minus two. So here come the men at arms against the longbows. Zero. Not a good result for the French. A shock, zero is attacker disordered, retreat one hex. So we'll pull this back and we will send the men at arms back here one hex. Let's go to the last and most critical attack for the French, which actually, even though it's two against one, does not work out all that well because of 
Henry's dismounted men at arm, men of arms minus three rating, which is pretty brutal to, to overcome. All things, and the matchup is kind of a neutral, they get it zero, and then they do get a one advantage because it's two against one. But still, it's gonna be minus two to the die roll. The French need a huge roll here to be able to come out ahead on this attack. They get one, a nine, which has all kinds of consequences. So a nine minus two is defender disordered. That's it, let's check. So this is the historical moment. So the men-at-arms are disordered, and the rules are if a unit is disordered in charge combat that has a leader in it, the leader has to immediately undergo a survival check. For this one, we're going to roll one die. If it is a six or less, Henry survives. If it's a seven, eight, or nine, Henry is dead. This will add a significant number of flight points to the English track, and Henry's battle will be out of command, which will completely change the nature of the interior of this English defense. This is the biggest historical role of the game. Everything hinges on this. Take a deep breath. If you're rooting for the English, a seven, eight, or nine would be catastrophic. A six or less is what you're hoping for. If you're rooting for the French, you want that seven, eight, or nine. Here we go. Ah! A seven! Oh no! Henry has perished. History has changed. So he will be removed from the battle. Let's figure out the consequences on the flight point track as well. The loss of your overall commander or your king here adds five flight points. That puts the English total to 11. Both sides on the brink here. The English need four more points to automatically lose. The French at 21 could conceivably go over on the same turn. The battle is sincerely poised on a knife edge now. That brings us to the end of Valoran's charge. So Valoran was killed as well. Valoran and Henry killed both in this massive charge. What an epic event this was. Okay, so now we're going to continue as the French. All right, so we are going to try to activate Jean's battle down here and increase the pressure on the English flank here. Now, at the end of this first activation, this is where we would make a loss check. So technically we are supposed to roll a die, but 21 plus nine is 30. There's no way the French can lose, although they're right on the brink. Likewise, the English are only four points away from an automatic loss at this point, should they suffer four more points of casualties. But let's see if we can activate Gene's battle here. He needs a zero, one, two, or three to continue his activation. He gets a seven, so it's going to switch back to the English. Okay, so this gets super interesting here. Because uh, Henry's battle is leaderless, these units can't move away from these units. They could attack, but it's very likely they're gonna get disordered and pushed back. Now, the next French activation, there's a very good chance that these two units, or these units attacking here, could eliminate this unit. That's worth four points, which would immediately push the English over their flight point total and give France the win. So I think if the French get another activation, there's a pretty good chance they can win. I don't think we can do much damage by activating these units. I don't think we can do much damage by activating Thomas's units on the west end. I think the English hope for victory lies with Edward of York and his two remaining longbowmen over here. Now, if they were to take out these two French units, or even one of them, each one is worth three flight points. That would mean if they got both of them, it would mean six, which would give 28, and they would immediately roll at the end of this activation to see if they win. Those casualties with the dice roll of like a four or greater would be enough to push the French over their flight point total and give England the win. So I think that's their best move for victory. And if they don't get this, it's very likely that they're going to lose the battle. So. We're going to activate Edward of York's and start, uh, battle here and start with his longbowmen. Alrighty, first up, we are going to increase the chances as much as possible. The longbows are moving here. They're going to fire at these unhorsed men-at-arms. Firing at a plus two against disordered units. Now, if they can retire the unit, well, let, let's make the result here first. So firing at near point-blank range with their longbows. Nine, the unit's eliminated. That is huge for the English. So this unit is wiped out from fire. That adds three points to the, fr the French flight point track, giving them 24. That means at the end of this activation, the English have a 30% chance for victory. 
Next up is the next longbow units. Now debating whether to have them charged to increase one to their die roll, but I think there's a chance here too that these the disordered men at arms might survive the next round, so we don't want to push it too much. And leaving this longbow out in the open here would give them give this unit a chance here to kind of really bring bring down some of the pain here. So we're gonna hold them where they are and fire at plus one against the mounted men against the men at arms in the open. A two plus one is a three. That's not so good. That forces a retreat of the unit here. So we'll move the unit back here, one square. Now, had they moved forward, they would have been retired, which would have given them, interestingly enough, one more flight point. So if we missed the flight point total by one die roll, it was the decision not to move that unit forward that would cost England the victory. Let's not forget, however, Edward of York's longbows that he sent to the western flank here. We're gonna have them come into action here. Now, they're out of command, so they can't move adjacent to an enemy unit. They can, however, move here and fire on these men-at-arms that are in the open here. So, at a plus one firing on the mounted men-at-arms, they get a two plus one is a three, which is no effect. Ugh, that doesn't help the English. So, so here is the big moment. At the end of this first activation of the English turn, we need to make our first loss check. The French have 24 flight points. If they exceed their flight point total of 30, they lose. We must add the die roll modifier into this, however. So we're rolling a 10-sided die. If they get a seven, eight, or nine, the French will have lost. They will have exceeded their flight point total and they will flee the battle. So this is a huge roll. The English with a 30% chance to claim victory at Agincourt. Here it is. A three. Oh no, it fails. The activation will continue now. The English will get a chance to activate one of their other battles. So the only battle they can activate now is Thomas's because you can't activate a leaderless battle, which is Henry's former battle in the, uh, in the in a second continuation phase. You can only activate the leaderless battle if it's the first activation, your free activation at the beginning of your turn or beginning of your phase. So we need a zero, one, two, or three for Thomas to continue his activation. He gets a one, so the English activation will continue. All right, so uh, this, Archer unit, because it's engaged with the unit next to it, it can, however, pivot one facing degree. So it's going to face to the front, which will allow it to now fire at the men at arms because archer units can fire out their flank hexes. So firing at plus two against the mounted men at arms. Two plus two is a four. No effect. These horses are graced by the good of the will of God here. So no impact there on the, uh, the mounted men at arms. I think we need to bring uh, Thomas's men at arms to the rescue here. We're going to shift them, bring them right up here against the mounted men of arms. And that brings the uh, Thomas's battle activation, the movement portion to an end. We are going to have Thomas's men at arms now try to shock attack on these mounted men at arms. The attack is a straight up minus one combat modifier. Here comes Tor Thomas's men at arms. <laughs> Minus one is attacker disordered, retreat one hex. That's not a good result there. Okay, interestingly enough. So once again, uh, this may not have been the brightest move here for the English. This unit is disordered and we can retreat it and reface it. So it's going to run back into the woods there. However, uh, Thomas's unit was disordered in melee combat, which means that we have to roll another leaderless casualty check on a six or less he will survive. On a seven or greater, Thomas has perished as well. A five. Okay, Thomas survives and he will stay with his men at arms here. That would have been devastating because that would have put the English over their flight point total. <laughs> they would have blown the game by doing that. So a little bit of fortuitous die rolling there for the English, although the, the combat result was a terrible dice roll for them. The odds weren't that bad. All right, so we're gonna make another roll here for continued activation for the English. We have to go back to Edward of York. Zero to four, but this is a second time it's been a continued activation, so we're gonna add one to the dice roll. Die roll eight. Oh, this is bad. Fails, it'll go back to the French. So after much thinking with the French activation here, at the end of this activation, there's going to be another loss check. I was thinking the best attack chances would be this mounted men, at men of arms on this men at arms, but the nature of this battle straight up head to head actually doesn't favor the French. Surprisingly, the best chance the French have is to come down to this crossbow unit to activate David 
David de Rambere's battle down here, which consists only of this remaining Genoese crossbow unit, which everything else has been wiped out, have them pull forward and try to shoot at these men at arms that are disordered. They actually have a pretty good chance to wipe them out, which would give them four points and the victory. So that's what the French move really should be. They push up here into the town and at the movement of two, they immediately can fire. The normal dice roll for this is a plus two. Because Thomas is in the woods, it's a plus one, but they're firing on the disordered chart here, which means that a die roll of a six or greater will eliminate this unit and push the English over their flight point first. A six plus one is seven. The unit is eliminated. So yes, let's uh, clean this up. Thomas is displaced to his sole remaining uh, longbow unit here. This unit is eliminated, the men at arms. This gives the French the four points they need for victory. One, two, three, four, because it puts the English flight point total at 15. Now, this ends that French activation. So now we do the loss check. The English have gone over the loss check because they've rolled, a, they've gone over their flight point total automatically. However, the French still must roll <laughs> for this because they could go over theirs on the same turn, in which case my understanding is it's a draw. We'll double check it. But so at a 24, the French need a seven, eight or nine to lose on the same turn that the English does ending the Battle of Agincourt in a period, well, a, a dead even draw for both sides. Let's make the dice roll. A six. Oh my goodness. The French do not. They hang on. 24 plus six is 30, which takes us right back over here to this one longbow unit that we didn't charge out into the open up here. I move this over here. Had we moved them into the open, this unit would have been retired which would have given them one more point, which would have punched the French over on this roll because they only missed by one. So that brings us to the end of the battle. The catastrophic loss of Henry was the tipping scales here that, that pushed the French to victory. The Battle of Agincourt has fallen to the, the English have fallen, Henry has perished, and the French have carried the day. So here is a final overhead view of the battlefield. Gosh, in retrospect, I'm kicking myself that we didn't move this longbow unit forward to try to, if that unit had been retired, it would have been a draw. So it was a razor thin difference here. Here's a look too at some of the casualties. Uh, Thomas's battle was devastated. Two longbow units lost and his men at arms units lost. And it's worth noting, all by this Genoese crossbow unit. So uh, I don't know what you would do with a French uh, heroes, but who, whatever happens to French heroes, these Genoese crossbow units should be elevated to the highest status in French society. Single-handedly, they took out both of these longbow units and then put, put the coup de grace on Thomas's men at arms. Basically, you know, one of the two big factors in why this battle ended up being a French victory. And of course, the other one being this mounted men of arms charge right here that disordered the unit and subsequently killed Henry. That that just was you couldn't recover from. I mean, that was tough. That's a five point loss right there out of the 14. So that was a was really a tough one. Um, fun to play. You know, a lot in retrospect too. even that mistake right here. So retreating Thomas's men at arms back into the woods here rather than here into the opening opened up the way for these crossbow units to, to move forward and fire at them. I didn't even see that move until I started looking from the French perspective. So I'm kind of kicking myself there too because had I retreated this way, this crossbow unit wouldn't have been advanced and been, been able to fire and which would have given the French a much worse odds to attack for victory down here. So mistakes made for sure all across the board, especially in those last couple English rolls, uh, last couple English phases here on that last assault. But um, fun game to play. Let's go through some final thoughts here. So that brings us to the end of this series. Four episodes and an introductory episode as well, a total of five episodes. Uh, this was really fun to do. I mean, uh, I think uh, that conclusion, that was pretty tight. It could have gone either way. Uh, you know, it just, it's, the, I think the fun part of it from my perspective too, is that there's a lot of second guessing involved. Like I'm kicking myself, I didn't move that long, I mean, it's the third time I've said it, but I'm kicking myself, I didn't move that longbow unit forward. I didn't retreat the unit. 
you know, thinking about what we could have done to kind of shift those English forces a little bit and make them a little bit more able to withstand that last charge. Uh, from the French, from the French side too, you know, blindingly going forward right at the start uh, certainly put them in dire straits early on. I am happy with how they kind of recovered and we were able to push the attacks on the flanks to spread the English line. I think that's a strategy that might work really well if you were to try that from the start. Uh, we didn't really, we kind of, I think what we did was more of a half traditional attack and certainly that where we tried to blend the archers and uh, Charles's battles there didn't work very well with all the archers getting mauled. Having said that, they were able to take out a couple of units and that set the stage for thinning the line when they moved to the flank. So, but uh, from my perspective of playing it, that, I thought that was really interesting. I mean, it just, I hope it was fun to watch. I hope it was interesting to see happen. Let me know what you think, other than the things I've probably pointed out. What should we have done? How might we have saved the day for the English? And I mean, we can say save the day for the English, right? But it, it was on an edge right at the end too. It could have gone, I mean, had the English roll, they had a 30% chance to win on that previous roll. They had a 30% chance to win even on that last roll there, to get a draw on that last roll, and they missed both of those die rolls. And then, you know, the catastrophic loss of Henry, really, of all things, to lose your leader like that on that French charge. That was just an epic charge by those French mounted men of arms. So. But uh, anyway, I had fun. We'll go on to the next thing. Uh, let me know if games you want to see. If you've enjoyed this series, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing. Again, about 40% of the content on the table, I'm, on the channel I'm trying to make uh, into kind of historical games and war games and things like that. So more things to come. We'll keep going on. I'm having a ton of fun making this stuff. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, and have a great day. We'll see you in our next series.